What's good, YouTube? In my last video, I was ranting a little bit about AI slop and how it's making the industry worse. And I do believe it's it makes sense to have a little follow-up today where I give perspective on why I think it's a bad idea to use LLMs in general in the workplace. And I want to show not so much the, the bad things that happen when you use LLMs, it's more about the things that don't happen when you use them that make your code actual slop and lead to you making yourself and your job basically obsolete in the future. So let's jump in. So what we have right here is an Azure function and the, the problem with that thing is it's still using AutoMapper and since a couple of months, I believe, AutoMapper announced that they want to go commercial. So the team decided that we want to get rid of AutoMapper and go for plain object mapping and therefore we have to replace the class that is called the Absurd Product Profile. And as you see, the mapping that we have right here, it's not only just one mapping, the models are actually quite big. So we have a couple of mappings here because very nested model. It's, it's actually quite a lot. And of course I could go ahead and say Copilot, Claude, whatever, I don't know. Get rid of all the mapper. Give me plain old object mapping for this, okay? I could do that, of course. And assuming that Claude or ChatGPT or Codex, whatever you use, is absolutely 100% perfect and gets the task right, 100% right, the very first time, it's still a bad idea to do it. Because when I decide to not use AI and do the coding myself, then I would go and have an extension class, extension, extend, I have a class that is called auto mapper remove auto mapper extensions, which does the precise mapping that we did before with the auto mapper. And this would force me to actually inspect the models to actually know what I'm doing. So I go to the input model and I see, okay, I go, I see right away that there's, there's heavy nesting involved here. And the other thing that I see is Sometimes we have JSON property names, like the, the attribute, and sometimes we don't. And that's the very first thing that happens when I don't use AI and actually wrap my brain about the code base. I see that we don't have this attribute here that annoys me right away because why don't we have this attribute everywhere, right? It's, it's confusing to me. And, and see now I have emotions, right? I feel annoyed, I feel confused. I create an emotional relationship with the code base, as stupid as it sounds, this is what's happening. And, and right now, just, just by seeing this, there's dots connecting in my brain, which makes me, as a, as a programming workhorse that I am for my client, more valuable, because now I have actual, actual knowledge about what's happening in the code, just by looking at this. The second thing that we have is when I go up, and I just, I just look for the model, and do some grapping through the model. I see, okay, we have some unit tests here. We have, what else do we have? Oh, we have the mapping, of course, and the models, and it's used in a couple of HTTP clients. So what I do right now is I, I do code exploration. I get a feeling of the usage of the thing that I'm about to touch, right? Like th this is not my code. This is uh, a colleague's code. We, we have conventions in the team where we aim to have consistent structure across the projects, but still I need to look into things to get an idea of what we're doing. Next thing I wanna see is if there's anything that also contains the word product that might refer or have something to do with this particular mod model. So I go and I grab through everything, all the files we have. And there's, of course, there's a lot of things that I already expect. We have this shared products folder right here, something that we have in other projects as well. So it's not, not too confusing to me and see, okay, what else do we have? Product, product, that's normal. Maybe, only maybe we have, yeah, there we go. We have service bus subscription artifacts that refer somehow to products. And as, as you see right here, we have subscriber e-sales. So that might be something I want to ask my colleagues because although I worked on, on the e-sales project, I don't really know why we have this reference right here. So there's this something that encourages communication. So the next step for me would be I go and I make a screenshot of this and I, I just make a screenshot of, of everything. And then I would go into my own research. 
it's that. I would write down a question for my team. Just some just some random question. Doesn't really matter. I put the screenshot right here. Looks good. Go back into the code. And more subscriptions with absurd products. Seems to be something different. And then I have another question. Draw a little box right here. Just so I find it quicker next time. Go back into my realm. Write down another question. Also for the team. Again, another screenshot. And now the next time I have a meeting with my team, I can ask those questions. And where's the screenshot? There's a screenshot. And when I now go back into the code, to the actual mapping, you'll see it would be quite a bit of work. Just a quick demonstration of how I would approach this, this mapping of this huge object now is I have the properties right here, of course. I copy all of them. Go back, paste them here and then would record a macro to now map them from the incoming item to the single product, right? So I would record a macro and it would look something like this. Record for position T, go to the opening parentheses, one step back, cut out the property name, you can have the line, highlight everything to the closing parentheses, paste the property name, copy it again. Now remember we want to map from the item to the single product. So I go single eh, product dot product ID, end of the line equals item product ID, end of the instruction, go one line down, go to the beginning of the line, and that would be the end of the macro. And I would apply this to this line just to see, looks good. And now I see I can apply this to other properties as well. Looks good. We see like this is the kind of the approach, assuming that we have, according to the auto mapper profile, that we have a lot of properties that have the same name, right? So when I go back, I would now go on to say a oh, product ID. Maybe we have, whoopsies, maybe we have something that is product. Yeah, we have a product ID here as well. It's just a tiny little difference in the case and I would go now and do this for the rest of the properties as well and of course you're absolutely right to say this takes way longer even though I'm using Vim and have a macros and stuff like that this takes way longer than just tell AI to auto generate this stuff for me but I want you to consider this assuming I'm in the phase right now of the project where I have actually I have the time I don't have any pressure. We have months and months ahead of the go live for that thing. Now I have the time to consider what I'm doing and to actually make sure that whatever I'm going to check in will work. And I don't believe there is a way around this. At some point, you have to explore the code. You have to know what you're doing. You have to familiarize yourself with the code base and all the dependencies that are on all the stuff. You have to connect the dots in your brain at some point. And I'd rather do is now in where I have time for that than later when there's a bug and I need to fix it in production quickly, right? So in my opinion and in my experience, this is the much better approach, even though it takes a little bit longer in the beginning, in the end, you will be able, when you see a stack trace of some bug with some error that happens in production, you are much more likely to look at, the, not even reading, look at the stack trace and see oh, that was that thing. At least have a really good feeling about where you have to look and what you have to touch in order to fix that thing quickly. And this is just not happening. It's just not happening when you auto-generate stuff like this, especially like this, with AI. And I also like to make the point that what I just showed you was just the tip of the iceberg, just a little bit of code to help me articulate what I think AI slop is and where it's coming from. I didn't even go into detail. I didn't even go into the date converters and whatever other stuff you have in the profile, all of that untested. I didn't even go into the unit tests or the quality of the unit tests. So many things that have to be investigated and discussed. All of that completely unseen if I really just go and, and slop some code into existence, right? So I hope I could drive home this in this video or show at least a little bit why I do believe it's a really bad idea to use LLMs to produce code or any other sort of result that is meant to go into production because of the things that don't happen, which are you don't explore the code anymore, you have no chance to build an emotional connection, you have no chance 
to have some questions and to have established proper communication to the rest of your team. And it's gonna be really ugly later when this auto-generated code is in production and produces errors and you don't know what even to do with the stack trace. It's gonna be much more expensive and draining to fix these kind of problems later than to prevent them now. Even though you have to spend a little bit more time now, in my opinion, that is the much better approach and it leads leads to much more solid and consistent results. And that is why I have such a strong opinion about LLMs at the, at the workplace. I do believe you just shouldn't do it. You just, you just shouldn't use it. And I have to say, I'm not an opponent of the technology. I'm not an enemy of LLMs or OpenAI or whatever. It's just I'm not a fan of the way it is used, especially at the workplace, which is the attempt to outsource thinking. Because it's just, this is just f trying to fight gravity. It just doesn't work. At one point, and a point will always come, where you fall on your nose. I do believe the right way, if there's a right way to use LMs, is to use it as an analytical tool to extend your thinking. And there's a couple of ways to do that, at least I find for myself, not only in programming, but also in other disciplines and other fields, ways to use AI in a way that it's more stimulating and that, that enables me to put information to my brain better and faster. And this is what I'm gonna talk about in future videos. For now, I think we have enough. And I wish you all a great week and stay safe and, and all the best to you, Papa.